The British courts ruled in favor of Dr. Jufali's ex-wife, Christina Estrada, allowing her an opportunity to get a portion of Dr. Jufali's $4 billion asset. The court denied Dr. Jufali diplomatic immunity, which would have shielded him from the divorce settlement. As it stands, Dr. Jufali will have to face up to his responsibility in court. From St. Lucia's UWP Senator Mary Isaac's point of view, the relationship between the UK and St. Lucia will definitely be affected. Ms. Isaac did not care to speculate on what the repercussions will be, saying that they are left to be seen. She also adopted a wait-and-see attitude on how the government proceeds from here on in handling the Jufali affair. What's your take on this issue of the diplomatic immunity? We understand that Dr. Jufali has been denied his request for diplomatic immunity and thereby his wife, his ex-wife, can now tap into his financial assets. Good for her. <laughs> well, I think that the whole thing is very sad for us, that we are seeing a court getting um, St. Lucia very entangled in, in um, a situation that is not very, very good. It does not speak well for St. Lucia. Um, I believe all of that could have been avoided because now we are being told that the whole, um, the whole appointment sort of is, is a farce, right? So where does that leave us if he's actually holding a St. Lucian passport? And we, are not, we, were not told, we were not told that he actually is holding a passport or not. When we asked that question, um, we didn't get an answer. Fellow UWP Senator Dominic Fede would not pass up on an opportunity to air his views on the matter. He says the women of this country ought to take note of the utter disrespect meted out to Dr. Jufali's ex-wife. According to reports, Dr. Jufali, who is supposed to function as St. Lucia's representative to the International Maritime Organization, has missed 27 IMO meetings. Fede called on Dr. Ernest Hilaire, who the UWP senator refers to as his friend, and who sits as St. Lucia's High Commissioner to the UK to come out and break his silence on the issue. Fede added that Dr. Hilaire in this capacity would be more than familiar with the circumstances under which Dr. Jufali was appointed. I think that if he was the High Commissioner at the time, uh, he would know uh, better than anyone else the details surrounding the appointment of, of Dr. Jafali, who, by the way, have never attended an IMO meeting at all. And that in itself certainly does help to confirm the court's judgment that Dr. Jafali's um, appointment was inauthentic and very suspect and suspicious. And I think that it raises a number of questions. And what do you make of Dr. Hillis' silence on the matter? Well, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, I think you would have to go and call Dr. Hillier and, and see if he would speak to you. But I can't tell you why he has been silent on the matter. Uh, he's been a, a friend of mine for a long time, but I, I want to say to him as a friend that he should come out and actually speak about it. And, and you know, let's be transparent. He's a, a new person coming into the politics, um, so he should, he should be transparent. And let's, let's really speak about the issues as they affect us. Fede spoke just ahead of Tuesday's sitting of the Senate. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas.